Hi everyone, welcome to the second collet stop video. In this video we're going to go ahead and face off all the extra material that we had left over on the body of the collet stop. We're going to cut the flats and the mill for the wrench and then we're going to go ahead and make our threaded stop rod as well. So I've got my collet stop flipped around. I'm going to go ahead and face off all this extra bit. This is somewhat wasteful. I mean you're using up an extra half an inch or five eighths of an inch of material but if you want all of those features to be concentric, they've got to be machined in the same operation. Three-jaw chucks just do not repeat if you pull something out of the chuck and then rechuck it. You'll always end up with a step in the middle and a concentricity error. So I've got a nice clean face here and I've zeroed my digital readout. Now I just need to get a measurement to see where I am. So I'm at 1.677 and... 3 tenths. Now I know that I need to be at inch and an eighth, so I'll just machine down. That should be 10 thousandths oversized. Let's see if that's right. And yep. Looking good. I'm going to go ahead and put a chamfer on the end of the threaded hole too to clean that up and I'll break the outside edge with a file. So now we're ready to cut the wrench flats on the collet stop. Now these are going to be two flats 180 degrees apart, three quarters of an inch wide. Now we've got to know the diameter of our piece and this is the actual diameter. So right now I've got inch and an eighth in diameter on this part. Um, now it's supposed to be for a three-quarter inch wrench, so I've got to take 1.125 minus 0.75, divide that by two, and that should be what I take off of each side. Now of course I'm going to want to also take a measurement, so it'll be a measurement from a flat that's created to the opposite side, and then I'm going to turn it around, put the flat that I've created onto a parallel, and do the exact same thing on the other side. So here's how I've got it set up. First of all, I'm gripping on the two ends of the piece rather than the diameter of the piece. This is going to be a lot more stable. Secondly, I've got the side that I'm going to be doing all my cutting on up against the fixed jaw of the vise. This way, once I find my Y0 by touching on the end of the piece, I won't have to find it again. You'll also notice that I don't have my parts sitting on a parallel right now. Uh, you can if you want to, but in this case it really doesn't matter. I'm going to be touching off on the top as well as the end moving in the correct distance in both ways and I'm going to be measuring before I do my final dimensions. So once I get this flat made then I'll turn the piece around and set the flat that I've just created on a parallel and that's going to give me my 180 degree indexing for my flats. Okay so I'm going to go ahead and touch off on the top and since this is the curve this is actually somewhat difficult to see the touch off. Uh, so I'm going to turn it on. Right now I'm well above my part, at least an eighth of an inch. And I'm going to bring it down slowly while also moving back and forth in the Y. And that way I'll be able to see the touch off a whole lot easier. So there's my touch off. And the problem with touching off on a curve is that uh, right now I've got a flat maybe about just a little less than an eighth of an inch wide, um, there's not a whole lot of difference between touching off a half thousandth and touching off five thousandths. So right now we don't really know how deep that is. Um, so I don't want to take the entire difference between this side and the other side in one shot. Uh, I'm going to take a token amount and then I'm going to take a measurement and see where I actually am. So the difference between the diameter of this piece and the size of the wrench flats is 375 thousandths, which means I've got to take off half of that from each side. Now I'm not going to take that difference all in one shot because I don't want to go too far and end up missing my tolerance on the low end. 
This tolerance is plus nothing minus 10, so I would probably be safe, but you never know. So I've moved in a token amount for cutting this flat, and I've basically moved the table up 150 thousandths. That should give me 37 and a half thousandths to play with, at least. So I'm, um, I know that I'm not going to miss my tolerance by going too deep. This is also going to allow me to touch off on the back side so that I can make my 375,000 steps here. I'm also not going to move in directly to 375 once I've touched off because if I touch off too heavily it may make me miss my tolerance. So what I'll do is I'll touch off on the back side, I'll move over and then I'll probably move in 350 thousandths. That'll allow me to take a measurement and see where I actually am. So there's my touch off. I'll go ahead and zero my digital readout. Okay, so that should definitely be shy on the length of this flat as well as the depth of the flat. So I'm going to take some measurements and double check that. First, I'm going to have to deburr this edge though. And I'm at 349 thousandths. Right there, I'm measuring 971 thousandths. Now on my flats, I have plus nothing minus 10. That's to make sure that the wrench actually goes on there. What that means is that I'm actually shooting for 745 thousandths. That's the middle of the tolerance, which means I've got to take 190 thousandths off of each side. That means that the measurement I'm shooting for is actually 935 thousandths. And I came in at 971, which means I've got 36 to take off. So I've got the one wrench flat cut, and I've gone ahead and deburred everything that I cut. Uh, so what I'm going to do now is put this flat up against this parallel that I just put in there. Uh, this is an inch and an eighth parallel, so if you've got a six inch curt vise, that should do it. Um, mostly what you're looking for is that you'll be able to still see the edge of the hole. That should mean that you're not going to accidentally machine into your vise jaw. I'm going to give this a light tap and just make sure that the parallel can't move or twist side to side. That way you know that flat is actually seated against the parallel. Uh, if your parallel can move or if it pivots on one side or the other of the flat, um, that means that you're not actually going to have parallel cuts when you make the second flat. So that's really important. Now our Y depth was set off of the back jaw, so we touched off on the back here and we moved in. That hasn't changed at all because the same face is sitting against the same jaw and that is still our, our Y0. What has changed is our Z depth. Before it was just clamped in there, not on a parallel, and it was floating around somewhere up here in space. And I touched off and I measured and I cut to the correct depth. Uh, now we're sitting on a parallel and we need to go ahead and touch off all over again. It's going to be the exact same procedure. Okay, that's going to be my zero. I can get off my part. I can move back to my Y zero. So I've moved in my 150 thousandths. Again, this is a token amount. I know it's not too deep. And now I'm going to go ahead and make my pass and I'll take a measurement afterwards. Again, here we're shooting for 745 thousandths. That is plus 10, minus nothing. And I'm measuring in at 781 and a half. Which means I've got 36 thousandths to take off. And I'm at 745 and a half. So that's within my tolerance. I'm gonna call that good. So here's the threaded stop rod that we're going to be using for our collet stop. Now we've got pretty wide open tolerances on this. We've got 
five inches long, plus or minus 30 thousandths, which is big enough to throw a cat through swinging. Uh, same thing with the length on this one inch, so uh, plus or minus 30 thousandths. Uh, 230 thousandths diameter on that one inch turned down section, which is plus or minus 10. And a 16th chamfer at the beginning and end of each of the threads, 45 degrees. It's half inch 20 all thread and we're going to go ahead and face this end off, cut that chamfer and then uh, flip it around. We'll cut it to length and turn our diameter. Here's my 45 degree chamfer tool. So I've touched off, I've zeroed, and now I'm going to move in 1 16th of an inch. Just going to clean up the edge of the chamfer here with the file. Now cutting this chamfer has a pretty good likelihood of uh, rolling over this first thread. So this would probably be something that you would want to go ahead and run a die over just to clean up that thread. By the way, I'm holding onto this with a collet because it's less likely to damage the threads. A collet's going to be gripping almost all the way around the piece with the exception of these slots, whereas a chuck is going to be grabbing onto just those three or four or six jaw points, and that can ding up the threads pretty easily. So, I've got both ends faced off. I'm going to take this out and get a measurement on it, and then I'll cut it to length. Okay. So it looks like I'm at 5.098, 98 thousandths to take off. So I've got my measurement made, and since I took this out of the chuck, I need to touch off again because I have no idea where the tooltip is in relation to the part. There's my touch off, and let me move in my amount. Okay, so let's see, we're right at 5 inches, so that looks good. I'm going to go ahead and stick it out about an inch and an eighth from the collet so that we can go ahead and turn down the, the smaller portion of the stop rod. Since I've gone to a carbide insert tool, I'm going to bump up my speed a little. Now I'm running at 1200. There's my X0, let me touch off on the face as well, right there, okay here we go. So I stopped a little bit shy of one inch, I stopped at 990 uh, from where I touched off on my face. That way I can get a measurement from the end to that shoulder and actually land right at one inch. Now that I've got the threads out of the way too, I'm going to go ahead and take a light cut so I get a good surface finish and I'll get a measurement. And uh, that way we can get our diameter. Alright, let's see where we are on the diameter. Looks like we are at 362 and probably about 9 tenths. Time to go the rest of the way. This should be everything but 20 thousandths. And I'm 20 and probably about 7 tenths above. And let me get a measurement on the length. Knock the burr off of the edge there first. Okay. Shows about 15 thousandths to go. Okay. 
We're good on our length. And we're good on our diameter. We're at 231. We have plus or minus 10 on that, so everything should be hunky-dory. Uh, I'm going to move it out a little bit so I can get this chamfer on the end of the threads, and then uh, besides from knocking off the burr there, we should be done with this part. Okay, so I'll run a die th over that just to make sure that I clean up the threads on the ends, but this is uh, done. We'll have a jam nut on it to keep it from moving inside the collet stop body. Uh, but you can use either side of this as the stop, either the large side or there. Uh, you can drill holes in these to give them clearance for through holes if you wanted to. You can put a center hole in one uh, so it can support pointy objects for instance. You can turn this down to whatever diameter you want to fit through whichever collet you want. Um, I put 230 on there because I do a lot of work in quarter inch and that's definitely going to clear the quarter inch collet. So here's our finished product. I've got my stop rod in there and basically you can just adjust your depth using the threads and then I've added a jam nut here so you can jam it into position once you've got it set and then just thread the whole thing into the back side of the collet just like that and in order to tighten this and make sure it's not going to back out of the collet you'll actually use a collet wrench which is an upcoming project so stay tuned for that one thanks for watching i'll see you next time